All right, so phase two. Let's get into what do we actually do in phase two? So broad conversation here. Uh, who wants to start? Um, as you're, maybe as you're beginning phase two, is there something to really be considering as you make this transition? I'll start. <laughs> yeah, please do, Tony. Um, I think first and foremost, self-compassion, you have to grab that when you transition over. That is a absolute tool and skill to build and hone um, as you, tr you transition because it is a, an individual experience, right? It's your own lab. It's your experiment. Yes, you have a guide by your side. You have your coach who's working with you to do a nice gradual transition that you know, is methodical and careful and, and protective, but there will be bumps in the road. And I just think it's really important to go into that because I think phase one may instill, of course it instills confidence and pride and you have momentum, but the humility that phase two can bring if you're not ready to deal with the ups and downs can be crippling. So I think going in, bring grace and self-compassion with you because they're extremely valuable. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 phase one is somewhat unique, right? In general, you're, you're motivated every week with, with some weight loss and phase two, that's not necessarily going to be the case though. Of course, people can lose weight in phase two, but I, I like your term there, self-compassion. Um, another thought that comes to mind is it's very natural to, to judge oneself, particularly in this area of one's life. And um, it's, not, it's hardly productive to do that. It's sort of like more important that you pick yourself back up and stay in the game and stay in action. Um, Kim or Adam, what else, just as you're sort of helping someone to transition into phase two of the program, what are some points that come to mind that are important to share? Kim, why don't you start? Okay. Yeah, for me, I would say it's really important not to open up your box too quickly. You know, mm -hmm. it can be really, really tempting to say, oh, great, I just finished phase one, so I'm going to go out and have pizza and beer, you mm -hmm. know, I, but I think that when you end phase one, it's really a vulnerable time to protect that weight loss, you know, so following that transition plan and slowly coming off the meal replacements as you introduce other foods is very, very important for success in phase two. You almost can't make that point enough. Adam, expand on that. Just from your own experience, you've worked with so many people through the years here. Why is it important to have a slow, gradual, methodical transition into a wider variety of food choices, healthy food choices? Yeah, Kim took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say, don't bite off more than you can chew starting. And I'm like, maybe I shouldn't say that. But, um, <laughs> um, you know, the decision making, which we all talk about, like, I, I think people have to understand you have entrees that you can eat in one minute, um, you know, and we all could say like, well, what are you eating for Saturday night? Well, it's going to be one of the HMR entrees if you're committed to being in the box. And mm -hmm. when you open up all these decisions, you can't take a fresh chicken breast out of the fridge and throw it in the microwave in a minute later. And then what are you going to have with it? So when you slow down that process, it really allows people to introduce, okay, if, if let's use chicken as an example, that's one tool to work with. And it might be one meal of the week. And I think a lot of people can look at that and be like, I can do this, you know, as opposed to 10, 15 different foods and realizing, oh my gosh, like I went from heating up HMR entrees to now full blown trying to figure this out on my own. And we definitely don't want that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, another way that we could sort of uh, describe this, of uh, this whole idea of a gradual approach is keeping up a lot of the phase one behaviors that you were practicing to lose the weight. Tony, speak a little bit about that. Why is it important to keep up? Obviously, you wouldn't scale back your exercise. You'd keep that in place. Um, you, If you are already eating fruits and vegetables in phase one, you wouldn't drop those. Uh, if you're a decision-free client, someone who wasn't using the fruits and vegetables, you'd get your fruits and veggies up. Why keep phase one behaviors in place? How does that support people just from your experience in working with people through the years? Yeah, well, I would start off first with the commitment level first, right? So mm -hmm. make, make sure you're still obviously record keeping, connecting mm -hmm. with your coach, coming to class, all of those three things with the same level of enthusiasm or more, right? Because now we're getting to the real stuff. And so there's definitely that connection needs to be 
um, strong. And I would even say that along with that, if there is a change in coach, right? If you are transferring to another coach or another class, you have to allow yourself time to, and patience to connect with both of those, your coach and new group, right? So there's a lot going on sort of under the surface there. But then from a behavioral standpoint, you know, these are, I always say, you know, uh, dance with the one who brought you, right? The, those behaviors, those weight loss behaviors need to stay yeah. up front and center and at a high level, there are safety net, you know, our buoy as we start to figure out other behaviors and those new behaviors. I love what Adam said about the chicken breast, you know, there's this, I think, fallacy that you could just plug and play these things when in reality, there's a whole new set of skills to build. And so we have to be able to slowly and methodically build those while keeping so much of the basis, the foundation, the platform we've been successful with in place and intact. Absolutely. Yeah. A safety net. You know, that's how I look at the phase one behaviors. And, you know, you, we are all, and we'll come back to this towards the end, and we are all essentially in phase two ourselves, which is at bottom, the practice, the ongoing practice of a healthy lifestyle, healthy diet pattern. But those phase one behaviors, I'll just speak personally for myself. They are my most decision-free uh, food routines. They're the, the, most of them are, they represent most of my guaranteed low, eat, low calorie food routines. And through time and experience, they're food routines I really love. Let's just pause on that point for a minute. Kim, can you just share, you know, uh, your experience with practicing and keeping up phase one food routines and how that supports you personally? Absolutely. For me, you know, it's really important to keep up with the physical activity. And one thing I've learned for myself, you know, weight management does not come easy to me in this program. And being a health coach really helps to keep me on track. And one of the things for me in phase two is making sure that I get up every morning and I do physical activity. Because if I plan it for later in the day, I've learned about myself that it might not happen. So, you know, that's a non-negotiable for me to get up every morning and do some form of physical activity for at least 30 minutes. Most, most times I do an hour, but the other thing that I do is I like to have a shake for breakfast every morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So clear phase one behavior that you're using as a tool in phase two. Adam, I have this image uh, when we had done a presentation nationally and it was, uh, you had sent in a photo of you grilling veggies while you were camping. <laughs> I'm sure you remember that. Um, yeah. Speak a little bit uh, to, about your practice of any phase one behaviors that support you as part of ongoing weight management. Yeah, you know, uh, and I think this is always good for patients to, or, or people that are doing the program to realize coaches are taking advantage of these tools, even if they were managing their weight before being part of the HMR team. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of people I work with know that I was a personal trainer for 10 years prior to coming to HMR. And I could tell them the ridiculous food prep I would do on a Sunday night, <laughs> meals on end, you know, and one of the things that I've really embraced is the kind of, I mean, make no mistake, you have to work hard in this program. And I think a lot of people know like hard work pays off, you know, it takes a lot of work to be in the box, but as we talked about decision free and meal replacements, like there's nothing better to know that if I come into work that I can have an HMR entree, I don't have to create 21 meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner throughout the whole week, I can rely on some of those easy wins. Uh, and that really streams line, streamlines a lot of the food prep that I do throughout the week. Uh, it's less work, but it's still, it's, it's a no brainer to know that it's supporting my health. It's great. And at bottom, less work, isn't that really just such an important part of yeah. being on track long term? My goodness. I mean, what's more important than that? Uh, Tony, anything you would add uh, just in terms, and then we'll move on from the whole idea of phase one routines as part of phase two? Yeah, uh, I think for me, I overlap a lot with both um, Kimberly and Adam, but I think the one thing that has saved me is sort of the discovery of things I love. You mentioned this earlier on, the stuff that you love that happens to be supportive. I try to give those items a lot of attention because I think being someone who was on diets most of my life, the thing that switched in HMR was the switch to lifestyle and enjoying things that allow me to be my healthiest. And so I try to spotlight those things, appreciate those things and celebrate those things. Yeah, beautiful, really great. So that main point of, of that, that five minutes right there, it's not to be overlooked. You wanna keep up a high level of phase one behavior 
behaviors, particularly as you're gradually introducing a wider variety of healthy foods into your uh, dietary pattern. It just helps you to stay on track and feel more in control while you're learning these new skills.